God's kingdom, like a powerful seed. Gottes Reich wie ein kraftvoller Same. How can God tell us how his kingdom, vision, and plan for the world ought to be? How do you explain differential equations or calculus to a small child that can't even do arithmetic yet? I admit, I can't even understand differential equations either. But you don't have to know everything, do you? That's why Jesus often used parables, comparisons that are still, though, much more profound and deeper than just this X is equal to that Y. A parable is a greater expanded image of extended to make clear to us how reality is in God's new world, his kingdom. God's new world, God's kingdom, is on the one hand totally different from the world we live in. It isn't the same, equal. Yet there is a kind of correspondence, approximation, or points of contact between our world and God's new world that Jesus finds and uses to explain everything to us. In Mark chapter 4, Jesus tells many such parables and many that are even somewhat similar in content, namely about farmers sowing seeds, planting and harvesting, etc. Jesus speaks here about normal, natural, earthly things to explain something totally different and much better to us. But he simply compares it to things we can understand. That makes sense, doesn't it? For we cannot know something that we haven't experienced, touched, or seen. Can you see a color that nobody else in the world has seen? How would you then describe it to another person? You simply say, well, the color is like. Otherwise, people don't understand what you're talking about. This is so elementary, so basic for all people in all countries that everybody, on the one hand, uh, can easily understand it. Yet on the other hand, there is something behind these short stories and explanations about farmers and sowing seed that you can easily overlook and miss or may never even be able to grasp or understand and get. Where, or who is God and what's He like and where is His place, where is our place in His plan and in His new world? How does he act in the world and in our lives to realize his vision and plan for the world and for us? He sows seeds. What does it mean to sow seeds? What does the farmer do after sowing seeds, scattering seed on the ground? Does he, have, does he do nothing at all? Doesn't a farmer have the easiest job in the world? I mean, what if the seed doesn't come up and doesn't grow? It says here that the farmer doesn't know how it does that. Does God really not know how seed sprouts and grows? Of course he knows, but he allows it to sprout. He lets it grow. He lets time pass. He allows it to bear fruit. A normal farmer doesn't really know how all that works. Yet a farmer knows, as we do, that plants don't just grow up on their own. They need soil for the necessary nutrients to grow in. They need rain, water, they need sunshine to mature, and they need nights to rest. But the farmer has neither power, nor influence, nor control over when the plants grow, nor over the success or failure of the harvest. He just has simple faith, hope, expectation that in the end there will be much fruit. Whether he is awake or sleeping, the plants simply continue to grow. And God? Jesus tells us that when we hear God's message, God scatters seed upon our souls, upon our hearts. The seed, Jesus says in verse 14, is the word of God that we hear, accept, keep, and do. And when we hear it and keep it and accept it and do it in our lives, then we grow. 
then God changes our lives so that the result of our lives is praise and worship to God and help to other people. We grow from what God puts in us through the Word of God, through the Word of Jesus, and one day bring fruit that God desires to have, a harvest. We let God's seed grow in us. But there are also many things that wish to hinder or poison this growth. There is an enemy, the devil. There are many th other things in life, other priorities, worries, interests that hinder our growth in faith. But when we believe in Jesus Christ, we are born again. Then we enter into God's kingdom. The kingdom of God starts right now, not when we finally reach heaven. The kingdom of God means every place where God rules and has the first place. When we enter into, the, into God's new world, into God's new kingdom, then we're entering into a, an, an area of new life where God is in charge. We allow Jesus Christ to be King and Lord over our lives, even in our decisions. Jesus tells us here that the kingdom of God is a reality. And for all who can observe and see it, there are clear indications that it is a reality. The farmer scatters seeds, but the seed sprouts and grows, although the farmer doesn't completely understand how it happens. In our lives, when we give God control over them, trusting in Him, then the seed of faith, grace, and salvation grows. It sprouts and grows and grows. Can you see how this happens? I always pray for each one of us that we all grow in faith. But can I always see and notice this? Can I always see and even notice it in myself? Perhaps not right away, not immediately, not directly. Just like we cannot always see, that is, unless we have a special time-lapse camera and film, we don't notice every day how the plant grows. If we look at our lives from one day to the next, it could be that we don't even notice any growth or maturing of our own faith. But that doesn't mean that we aren't growing in faith and that growth is not occurring. Jesus is talking here about God's new world, the kingdom of God, and how this kingdom grows. It grows with faith, unshakable trust in what we, you still cannot see or always understand. But instead of worrying a lot about the seed he has just scattered, the farmer just lets it all take its normal, natural course. The seed sprouts with the stalk, and then the head, and then the full kernel in the head. And then the farmer goes out and harvests the crop. Whether sleeping or getting up, night or day, he hasn't done anything more than to just trust that it will grow. He also knows that he can't do anything to make the seed grow. It grows all by itself. We can understand this. Regardless of how much we worry, we must trust God that He will take over more and more of our lives and that other people will also accept His Word in their hearts and believe. What does Jesus want to tell us here? In God's kingdom, we must submit to His rule. The kingdom of God isn't territory here on earth, but it is every place where Jesus Christ rules in the hearts and lives of people, where people allow themselves to be ruled by Him. But God rules His kingdom, not we. We also don't produce His kingdom, but that's what He does. It isn't a product of human effort, but it's always the result of what His power has accomplished. Martin Luther once said, The kingdom of God comes on its own, and our prayer, Your kingdom come, is that it comes to us. What is important for us is our faith and trust that God is at work in us and in the lives of other people, sometimes without us being able to see that much. Perhaps we ask ourselves whether or not God is really real. If He is really actively at work in His kingdom, or if He has just simply left us all alone. 
It is often in these dark, difficult times that we begin to have a lasting relationship with God. It is then that we first find God. Like plants surely grow in nature, so is the growth of Christians whose lives are submitted to Jesus, to God's Lordship. God makes sure that we also grow in faith and that we always become more like Jesus. When God leads our lives, then we rely on God for every decision. Then we rely on God's grace through every decision. We depend on God's grace to forgive us when we sometimes sin, and we depend on God's power that we may stand up again and live for Him anew. Are you living under God's rule? It isn't too late to give Him control over your life. When we grow as Christians, then that makes also a big difference in the lives of other people around us. How strong is growth in nature? A growing tree can even break up the pavement of a street. Weeds grow out from under the asphalt in a parking lot. Nothing stops growth when God allows it. This is the way it is in God's kingdom. The devil always tries to distract us away from God's way. But when we grow in faith and in the love of God for one another and for other people who don't know God, and when we put ourselves under God's direction, nothing can hinder all the good God allows to grow out of it. How can we grow in faith in Jesus? By regularly reading God's Word in the Bible. Praying and serving other Christians, praising God with other Christians, telling other people who don't know Jesus about your faith. We can ask ourselves every day, do we love our Lord more? Do we love other people more because Jesus first loved us? Is there something in my life that I need to let go of so that God can have more room in my life? Are there sins in my life I need to confess to God and ask for forgiveness for? Is there someone I need to forgive? Growth sometimes goes really slowly, but someday it becomes evident. You can see it. Something happens when the seed goes into the ground all by itself, literally, automatically the soil allows the plants to grow up and bear fruit. God does this automatic thing. It all grows underground at first and then you see it above ground. This is also the way it is with faith in Jesus and with life with God in His new world. A few years ago a seed was found in one of the tombs of an ancient pharaoh in Egypt that was seven, several thousand years old. This seed was planted then and it grew up because there was still life in the seed. Amazing. In the Bible, we read that our faith in Jesus comes from the seed of the Word of God that is alive and lives forever. When God's Word goes forth, then it does not return void or ineffective, but accomplishes what God wants it to. In verse 28, uh, the steps of growth are described. First the stalks, and then the heads form, and then finally the full kernel in the head. There are steps and phases in which our faith in Jesus grows. When we listen to God's Word, try to do it in our lives, obey it and apply it by faith, then our faith grows. God gives a harvest for the seeds that are scattered. and God allows more and more people to hear about His kingdom and to accept Jesus Christ in faith. That is, this is like a great, good harvest that brings joy to many people. A pastor in the Middle East hands out Bibles every day among many Muslims at a bazaar market. He has difficulties because of it and is sometimes threatened. But even the people who threaten him are afraid because they think, they think when they read the Bible, it has the power to change their lives. And so they're very afraid of it. Similar things are happening in many countries around the world. Jesus says in John chapter 4, verse 35 and following, Look at the fields. They are ripe for harvest. Workers are needed to bring in the harvest. 
Matthew 24, verse 14, Jesus says, And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in the whole world as a testimony to all nations, and then the end will come. From time to time we see and hear and read in the news about how there is much unrest in different countries. Some corrupt governments may be overthrown, yet many people still ask, what will come next? The kingdom of God is growing and will continue, even if human governments and kingdoms decay and fall. In Isaiah chapter 61, verse 11, the Bible says, For as the soil makes the sprout come up, and the garden causes seeds to grow, so the sovereign Lord will make righteousness and praise spring up before all the nations. In verses 31 and 32 of our text, Jesus compares here God's kingdom with one of the world's smallest seeds, the mustard seed. Still the mustard seed grows up to be the largest bush in Israel. The kingdom of God begins very small, first with Jesus, then with His twelve disciples, until it finally reaches us here in time and space 2,000 years later. It grows and grows all over the world. God's rule began small, but it grows. Before we became Christians, perhaps our lives appeared to be small and without much meaning. But with faith in Jesus, our lives grow up, and we re really begin to take root as well. And God even uses us to bring other people into His kingdom. The Lord delivers us from all of our habits and sins that always used to hold us back. When we read God's Word in the Bible, then it gives us meaning purpose, and hope. But we also need the fellowship of other Christians to grow. We begin to see other people with the love of God, and we begin to treat them differently, better than the way we used to treat them. And then one day we notice what all God has done in our lives that He's caused us to grow like a big bush from a tiny seed. This is the life under God's rule. A life that grows, that God causes to grow. When we believe in Jesus Christ, then we place our lives under His Lordship and leading. And what happens next? What comes of it? Our lives grow in increased trust in God. And when we share the message about God and Jesus like seed with other people uh, <clears throat> who can also grow in their lives, we should sow and scatter this seed, tell other people about Jesus Christ, what He has done for us. But we aren't the ones who cause the seed, the message about God and Jesus, to grow in their lives. God does that. God allows His Word to become more and greater in their lives and ours. The Apostle Paul writes in 1 Corinthians 3, verse 6 and 7, I, Paul, planted the seed, Apollos watered it. But God has been making it grow, individual lives in faith in Jesus. God has been making it grow. We Christians should always be ready to scatter the seed, the message of God's Word, what Jesus has done, to, uh, done for us to other people. There is no better time to do that than now. And for people who haven't yet heard or understood that God loves them, that Jesus has carried their sins and wants to give them peace, there is no better time than now to accept the seed of God's Word into their lives. Like the farmer in this story, we don't have to always know how everything works, but we rely on the fact that God is at work when the seed of the Word goes forth, and when we tell other people what it means to live a life under God's leading. Many of us today probably think, well, I don't know enough about the Bible yet to tell anybody about my faith in Jesus. But our job is simply to share God's Word with all other people. God's job is that, that other people understand it believe it, and want to live with Him. A few year, years ago, when we had the free Christian book table at the university cafeteria, in the university cafeteria, somebody asked me, what is faith? 
Does God really exist and can we believe in him? I told this person simply the words of Jesus. Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be open to you. Maybe we don't understand everything in the Bible or what God is like, but we can still say, God wants to live with you in Jesus Christ, that you believe in Him. You should seek Him. A pastor once talked with a manager lady in her office about God and other religions. The manager lady thought that all religions lead to God. But the pastor said that this, the consequence of this would only result in very many different contradictory statements. The manager lady was quite affected by the talk and went home later. There she discussed the topic with her husband for three hours and is still searching for the truth. When we live under God's rule, then God allows our lives to grow from one seed to a head and then to ripen kernels for Him. When He leads our lives, we may not see this growth every day, but it still happens. When we think about our lives a year ago or five or ten years ago, then we see how much God has allowed us to grow in faith and maturity when we put our lives under His control. There's really nothing more exciting in life than this. Amen.